The Smith's detection system has several different automatic detection features that are designed to help you as an operator identify potential threats. And we're going to talk about each one of those for you. So the first one we're going to discuss with you is called High Density Alert. High Density Alert draws a purple box around any material that is of a high density. And this feature is typically used to identify such things as firearms or handguns and it's typically focusing on the metal portions of the frame because they're a very dense metal. It's also designed to help you identify in an x-ray image hand grenades and also an explosive device such as a metal pipe bomb. Now metal pipe bombs here in the United States are probably one of the most common type of explosive devices that you'll encounter. So this system is a very good system in regards to dealing with very common threats that we will see in the United States, especially the firearm. So what we're going to do is we're going to show you in the x-ray how this system actually works and how it identifies for you these potential threats or shows you in the x-ray image what you should be focusing on in regards to high density materials. So what we're going to do use to do this test is this firearm, the Glock. This is a Glock. It's a 40 cal. It's fully loaded. This is a real firearm and it's very uh, common type of design that we're seeing today in the United States. So with Glocks, the lower receiver is all a plastic polymer, polymer, and there's typically no metallic content inside there. The upper receiver and slide, is, slide and barrel are going to be of the metal, and this is what the system is going to be focusing on and trying to detect. Now, we'll show you a little bit about how well it can detect ammo, but the first thing we're going to show you is that the system is set to the Smith's Detection default settings that if you bought the machine and, and it installed it, it's set to a default setting, and it doesn't work very good at all. So we're going to take this handgun, we're going to place it into a backpack that has a lot of clutter to include a, a laptop and see if the feature on the default settings can actually detect this firearm, okay? So we'll place it at the top of the bag so all the clutter is, is basically masking it. We'll go ahead and run it through the x-ray system and you'll see if the automatic detection is able to detect it. Now in this scenario, it actually was able to do it. So even on the default settings, this system was actually able to identify this Glock pistol with the loaded magazine on the inside of it, okay? Even on top of a laptop. That's pretty impressive, all right? So what we're going to do next is we're going to actually going to take the magazine out and try to reduce the amount of metal that the x-ray is seeing to see if we can trick it and get this gun past it. But the other thing we want to show you is we've set the system to stop this in the belt anytime it automatically alarms. And the reason we do this, if you have something like a firearm coming into your checkpoint, you don't want it coming out the other side where the person has access to it. You want to lock it inside the tunnel so that individual cannot get access to that firearm and you, as the enforcement officer, can actually uh, take control of the situation. So let's run this test again. We're going to grab the gun out of the bag. We're going to go ahead and remove the magazine from the, the gun, okay? And we'll actually separate these inside the bag to see if uh, we can get detection. And we'll place both these inside the bag, but now separate it and see if we can get the system to automatically detect these again. All right, so we'll run them through one more time. Again, this is the default settings that Smith's used for this. And you'll notice now we did not get an automatic detection. So when we separated it, the amount of metal contact or the area that it was seeing the metal is no longer triggering the alarm. So this is a problem. Now a Glock is a large size firearm and we're going to show you a couple other firearms that are much smaller um, that on this setting will never detect. So we've done this for a long time, so we figured out what setting works. It's just important that you understand that the default settings that Smith has on these systems are not effective when you start looking at all the different types of firearms that are out there. So we know how to, to adjust this, so we're going to go into the menu. We're going to go down to the automatic detection. And we're going to go down to the high density alert, which is turned on. Again, this is a purple box. And it's set to a minimum of absorption of 90 and a minimum size of 50. Well, that size is too big. So we're going to reduce that size all the way down to the size of 15 centimeters squared. And then we're going to lock that in and we now have new parameters that we put into the system that are user defined. So this is important if you have a Smith's detection system and you're trying to detect something like guns, hand grenades, or metal pipe bombs. You actually have to go into the settings and adjust it 
to optimize your ability to detect these things. So we're gonna take the same bag we just ran that we got no detection on a Glock 40 cal pistol and we're gonna see if we can get detection um, under these new settings. So we run it through again and this time the system has automatically detected the firearm. Okay, here it's actually detected the slide and the barrel. It's also actually detected the magazine, but we also have a false alarm in this area on some of the high dense materials inside of the laptop. So for you as an operator, what you're doing is you learn through the process of x-ray interpretation. Once you get an alarm, you look inside the box that's being provided to you, in this case, the purple box, and you determine if that item is a threat. So in this scenario, the first one that's in the center here, we can look at that and tell that's the components to a laptop. There's no threat there. It's just a false alarm. But we start looking at the next one, we see the ammunition, plain as day. And then here, as you get better at x-ray interpretation, especially with firearms, you're gonna realize that that's a slide and the barrel, and you can actually see the spring portion right here. Now the lower receiver is extremely difficult to pick out in these because they're made of a plastic polymer. And in a cluttered bag, you won't even see that lower receiver typically. So this is the one example of how to adjust the settings to optimize detection. So now we can know we can detect a, the Glock firearm. How do we do against all the other types of firearms out there? So what we're gonna do next is we're gonna run a bunch of different firearms through the system of varying sizes, revolvers, um, subcaliber sub uh, 380s, small compact pistols. Uh, we're gonna run all those through in, in one batch to see if it can detect all of them. So we uh, go ahead and turn the belt on. We'll take our big sample of uh, firearms and ammunition and we'll run these through the system and see on the new settings just how effective it is against a bunch of different types of firearms. So you're seeing up in the top corner, this is a nine millimeter sub uh, semi-automatic pistol. It's got the magazine inserted into it and it's also got an additional magazine. The system was able to detect this no problem, okay? Over here, we've got a Smith & Wesson Airweight Revolver, which is mainly a titanium uh, or aluminum frame, but the cylinder and the actual barrel are made from a steel, okay? So what it's actually detecting is where the um, cylinder is. So that's the highest densi density portion of it that it's detecting. Now we start looking at the rest of the screen, and this box of ammo, this AR-15 uh, 223 magazine, um, the magazine for the, the small 380. This is a Ruger LCP. It's very hard to detect an x-ray on, on the settings we just used. And over here we have a uh, North American Arms 22 pistol. None of these items alarmed. So the settings that we just input seem to be much better, but we're still not detecting all the firearms. So we need to do something about this. So again, through the process of testing and evaluation, we figured out how this actually works and how to solve this problem. So again, we'll go into the menu. We'll pull up the automatic detection window again, and we're gonna go down and change the minimum size setting again, because it's not small enough to pick up these smaller guns. And we're gonna drop it all the way down to five centimeters square. We'll lock that in and we'll rerun the test to see if we get better detection, especially for the North American Arms 22 and uh, the Ruger LCP 380 pistol. So next test, let's hope we do a little bit better this time. And we did, okay? So we've got much better detection across the board. Still not 100% detection in regards to the ammunition, but we are able to get the Ruger LCP, and you can see it got the back portion. This is a really hard gun to detect in, in x-ray, um, also in walkthrough metal detector. Um, it got the back portion where the most metal is actually concentrated. It was able to get the um, 40 cal mag. It got the North American Arms 22 pistol, but the box of ammo it did not alarm to, but it did, uh, in this scenario, get the AR-15. So with ammo, we'll show you that a little bit more later, but with the high density alert, this is a, a good introduction to how it works. And in the next video, we're gonna show you how it works in regards to 
explosive threats and also knife threats.